For the past few years, lost media has been a hot topic on the internet. For those unaware of what lost media is, this video is for you. Today, I want to dive headfirst into the topic, review some of the biggest lost media searches, and provide you with resources for further research, if you choose to do so. Every piece of lost media I cover in this video will be linked in the description below. This is The Bizarre World of Lost Media. So what is lost media? Lost media can be described as any video, TV show, episode, movie, or song that either is no longer publicly available or was never publicly available to begin with. In other words, media that is lost. Let's take a look at some examples. The Drake and Josh Pitch Pilot Although the first episode of Drake and Josh is titled Pilot, there was actually an even earlier pilot produced in 2002, two years before the show would officially debut on Nickelodeon. The biggest difference here is Walter Nichols, who was played by Stephen First instead of Jonathan Goldstein like in the final show. All we have of this unaired pilot are a few screenshots and short clips released by everyone's favorite Dan Schneider. The full pilot has yet to be found or officially released, deeming this as lost media. Another example is Johnny Bravo voiceover, or JBVO for short. JBVO was a spinoff of the Cartoon Network show Johnny Bravo, airing from 2000 to 2001. It featured Johnny Bravo taking show requests from write-ins and phone calls. People were able to call the show's number and speak to Jeff Bennett, the voice actor of Johnny Bravo, to request the show they wanted Cartoon Network to air. Many of JBVO's episodes are lost, but one of the most infamous episodes was recently found this year. More on that later. Now that we know what lost media is, Let's take a look at some of the most famous searches in lost media history. In 2011, there had only been one Spongebob movie, that of course being the 2004 classic. That's why it was suspicious that an Amazon listing for a movie titled A Day with Spongebob Squarepants was found on November 22, 2011. The description reads, In this mockumentary, Spongebob lives above ground like all Hollywood superstars. Afraid that Spongebob is becoming old news, his boss runs a contest called Spend the Day with Spongebob. The contest makes Spongebob the talk of the town as thousands of kids enter to win. The lucky winner is Seth, and he is ecstatic about his day with Spongebob. However, the day becomes a roller coaster ride as things don't quite go the way they were planned. The Lost Media Wiki, who I'll cover in depth later, banded together immediately to get to the bottom of this as the Amazon listing disappeared a day later. Theories ranged from a future film that got leaked to a cancelled movie, until the cracks in the story began to show. For starters, the listing was made by Lawrence Holly, who was associated with Regal Films, a production company that made celebrity documentaries that were low budget and unauthorized. Then, looking at the box art used in the Amazon listing, it was discovered that the boy is actually just a stock image, and the background can be traced back to cartoonist Jorge Pacheco. Even stranger, an anonymous 4chan user who claimed to work at Hastings ordered a copy of the movie that for some reason was in their employee system nearly 4 years after the original Amazon listing. Either this person was lying for attention, or the movie never arrived. Either way you look at it, it's clear that whatever a day with Spongebob Squarepants is, it's very clearly not affiliated with Nickelodeon. Having received all of the information they could on their own, the next step for the Lost Media Wiki was to contact Lawrence Holly and Regal Films. You'll notice a common practice in Lost Media searches is conducting thorough research with what's available, then locating contacts and reaching out. Sometimes you'll get answers, sometimes you won't. Let's see what happens here. Firstly, using the address listed on Regal Films' website, which by the way I wouldn't go visit because it used to be infected with a Trojan virus and I'm not sure if it still is, but anyways, Regal Films was discovered to be in a food court in the back of a mall. Additionally, reaching out to Regal Films' employees led to dead ends, as most of them were either unresponsive or aggressively private individuals. It wasn't until August 3rd, 
2016, almost 5 years later, that the search finally came to an end when the YouTube channel Ongoing Mysteries had a phone call with the original creator of A Day With Spongebob. This individual, nicknamed Mr. Orange for privacy reasons, explained the entire headache that is Rico Films, as well as the origins of his movie. He wanted to make a movie about Spongebob because he was a fan, and had the idea of Spongebob having a real life outside of his show. Since Nickelodeon would never allow that, he had to write the movie as a parody. Mr. Orange ended the interview with the intention of one day releasing the film, but after 7 years, it's likely to never happen. A bit of an anticlimactic ending to a years long search effort, A Day with Spongebob Squarepants never existed and was nothing more than an idea in someone's head, a script in their hand, and no money to begin production. You could say the only lost media left to find here is the script Mr. Orange wrote, but since he hasn't been heard from in 7 years, it's likely to never happen. What makes A Day with Spongebob Squarepants such a standout example of lost media is that it encompasses all of the processes search efforts usually undertake. A widespread search effort, sleuthing around, finding contact information, reaching out, and sometimes flat out disappointment. There are times where contacts are dead ends, they have no information, refuse to release information, or, like in this case, provide all of the answers but not the ones we wanted to hear. I cannot recommend Blame It On Jorge's video of the search enough. He goes full in depth on the topic in chronological order and does not miss a detail in his very well edited video. Jorge also includes the interview I was talking about. Other videos I wanted to recommend are El Supersonic Hughes Iceberg video covering a day with Spongebob, as well as Rebel Taxi's video on the subject. Rebel Taxi's video is the oldest and came out while the search was still ongoing, so it's a nice time capsule of what it was like at that time. All videos linked below. For this next entry, I wanted to provide an example of a lost media search going right. Thankfully, it's not nearly as extensive as the day with Spongebob, so I'll cover it in its entirety here. Let's go back to JBVO. I previously mentioned that one of the more infamous episodes was recently found. This was the fan dubbed Dragon Ball Z episode. Here's the story. Back in the 2000s and early 2010s, there wasn't much known about JBVO at all, and barely anything had been archived online, so when people were discussing the show, it was all based on memory and nothing could be verified. In a situation like this, it's easy for rumors to circulate based on false memories, and that's why people were skeptical when some claimed to remember the Dragon Ball Z episode. The rumor went like this. A viewer called in and asked Johnny to play an episode of Dragon Ball Z. Johnny apologized and says he can't play an episode in its entirety due to how long it is, so instead decides to speed up the episode while narrating over it. JBVO was only able to air short cartoons, since it's a half hour show, and an episode of Dragon Ball Z would have taken up the entire show. A VHS tape collector on YouTube, CBZ VHS, came across a Cartoon Network VHS tape from the summer of 2001. This VHS contained a very short clip of the Dragon Ball Z segment from JBVO, which he uploaded to YouTube on May 2nd, 2017. This was obviously a huge find as it confirmed all of the rumors, but he only found 5 seconds of footage. At the very least, now that people knew the segment actually exists, there is more motivation to go looking for it. Six years later on May 14th, 2023, episode 9 of JBVO was uploaded online, the episode containing the Dragon Ball Z segment. It's still a bit unclear who got their hands on the footage and uploaded it, but we do know that the original episode aired on May 7th, 2000. 23 years later, the episode finally became publicly available again. Here's the segment in its entirety. Coming up, we'll tell you how to make a request, so stick around. All right, next letter. It's from Jennifer in Sterling State, Colorado. She loves Dragon Ball Z. Uh-oh, I gotta call her and explain something. <laughs> Enter your account. Hello? Hello, Jennifer? Mm hmm It's your pen pal, Johnny Bravo. Hey, how you doing? Fine. All right. Now, Jennifer, I got your letter, okay? Okay. 
and I know that you love Dragon Ball Z. Now, I don't know how to tell you this, my pen pal mama, but this hurts you more than it does me. I, I can't play a whole episode of Dragon Ball Z. Why? I'm sorry. I, I know, I know. See, my show's only a half hour long, little lady, and, and that Dragon Ball thing is a half hour, too. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do, all right? I'm going to play your favorite episode of Dragon Ball Z, and we're going to fast forward through some of it, all right? Okay. Stay with me on this one. All right, right here, Goku is on Namek fighting that Frieza guy. Okay, okay. All right, now, okay, now back on Earth, those Namex dudes are recuperating. There's that guru guy. Oh, yeah, looks like bad news. Okay, okay, he on... Um, wow, they're bombing, huh? Wow, okay, there's that floating half-body guy. Goku uh, flying or doing something over there. Frieza hurls some kind of fireball at him. Oh, man, this is... All right, okay. There you go. Kind of loses something fast forward, doesn't it, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, little lady. I, I love that show, and I love you, so I wanted to play it for you. Because this is your all-request cartoon show. Thank you, pretty mama. Okay. Take care now, Jennifer. Bye. Bye-bye. What I find so fascinating about this particular lost media search effort is that it was never really a search effort to begin with. Unlike a day with Spongebob that had a lot of people looking around and plenty of contacts to comb through, the JBVO Dragon Ball Z episode was a rumor for the longest time. And then when there finally was confirmation of its existence, where were people really supposed to look when there was already little to no information about the show itself? Who were people supposed to contact? And just like CBZ VHS's original video, the entire episode was released out of nowhere. So sometimes during efforts to find lost media, either the right people come along out of coincidence, or things just magically resolve themselves. There's really no telling what will happen, which is what makes lost media hunting so dynamic. Finally, instead of focusing on one piece of lost media for this final entry, I wanted to go over a few in order to illustrate a point. Sometimes, lost media is withheld from the public even though there is a known demand for its contents to be released. Let's take a look. 12 Tales Conquer 64 is the original version of the game that would become Conquer's Bad Fur Day for the Nintendo 64. Developed by Rare, 12 Tales starred the same old Conquer, except unlike in the final game, Conquer here is an innocent animal. When the game was first shown off, Rare was criticized for releasing too many games about cutesy animals like Banjo-Kazooie and Diddy Kong Racing, so they recreated the game from scratch to be overtly dark, edgy, and crude. By the time Rare reworked 12 Tales, much of the game was already finished and there's a lot of footage of it online. Tim Stamper, the creative director at Rare, has also confirmed that he has a working prototype of not only 12 Tales, but also Project Dream, the original version of Banjo-Kazooie. Now that we know these prototypes exist and are in official hands, it's up to Tim and Rare on whether or not these prototypes will ever see a public release. Meso Blues is the pilot for Johnny Bravo, created by Van Partible. It started as a senior thesis in college, but when a friend of Partible showed the animation to someone at Hanna-Barbera, he was asked to create a pilot for the new Cartoon Network studio, thus birthing Meso Blues. It featured an early version of Johnny Bravo, a parody of Elvis Presley, and that's kind of all we know about it. Some clips of the pilot have been featured in promotional materials from Cartoon Network, but otherwise this pilot is almost entirely lost. Partible has confirmed that he still has a copy of the pilot, but only shows it to close friends, family, and students at the college he teaches at. It's unlikely the full pilot will ever be released unless Partible has a change of heart. The final two entries discuss death, so if you don't want to hear about that, please skip to the timestamp on screen. It's no secret that Steve Irwin, a world-renowned conservationist and TV personality, tragically passed away in 2006 after being impaled by a stingray. What's less known is that the recording of his passing still exists, and is the only recording of a person dying from a stingray in the world. For obvious reasons, the footage will likely never see the light of day. Lastly, we have the late Christine Chubbuck, a television news reporter from WXLT-TV in Sarasota, Florida. 
There's an entire rabbit hole of Chubbuck's bouts with depression, and I don't feel it's appropriate to get into that here, so I'll leave a resource in the description to move on. Anyways, on July 15th, 1974, Chubbuck signed on the morning news and spent her first eight minutes discussing a recent shooting. She then said the following, In keeping with the WXLT practice of presenting the most immediate and complete reports of local blood and guts, TV40 presents what is believed to be a television first. In living color, an exclusive coverage of an attempted Chubbuck then pulled out a revolver from underneath her desk and ended her life on air. Unlike the Steve Irwin footage, this event happened live to a public audience. Station owner Robert Nelson kept the footage, but his wife transferred it to be stored away at a law firm with no plans of ever releasing it. It's unknown if any viewers at the time were recording their TVs, so there is a possibility that one day this footage will be leaked online, but I personally don't think it should be out of respect for Chubbuck. We covered a lot in this video, so I wanted to use this portion of the video for review. As we know, lost media comes in all different forms. Although I mostly covered TV examples in this video, as I believe them to be the most common and popular types of lost media, there are of course other mediums including things like music. I specifically chose the lost media I covered in this video with the goal of illustrating the mysterious, dynamic, and exciting nature of the subject. 1. Every case of lost media is different and should not be treated the same. 2. Some lost media searches will be full of leads, others will be full of dead ends. 3. Lost media will sometimes appear out of nowhere. And 4. You never know what will happen. The memories of someone online detailing an obscure piece of lost media might be proven correct, or they might be misremembering. Someone out there might have a lost film from 80 years ago they aren't aware is lost, and may one day upload it. Someone might have industry connections and is working to get a piece of lost media released. We don't know what happens behind the scenes, but what we do know is that there is a passionate community working hard every day to search for new pieces of lost media. In the final section of my video, I want to highlight the community and where you can go to continue learning more after clicking off this video. The most well-known, and dare I say the home of the Lost Media community, is the Lost Media Wiki. This website constantly updates on new pieces of Lost Media, their status, ongoing hunts, as well as a comprehensive list of Lost Media. I can credit a lot of my research for this video to this website, as it's definitely the number one place to go when you want to read up on Lost Media, or discuss it with others. This website also features YouTube creators, so it's all around a great way of staying informed on the latest happenings. They also have a Discord channel, so be sure to check out their website. Next, we have the Lost Commercials Foundation. They're exactly what the name implies, a community of people working to archive lost commercials, ads, and PSAs. The YouTube channel, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that, made a comprehensive video covering the community, so I'd recommend checking that out. And of course, the Lost Commercials Foundation also has a Discord, so be sure to check that out as well if you're interested in the subject. Now I want to talk about YouTube channels. Arguably the most well-known YouTuber that covers lost media is Blame It On Jorge. His video quality is absolutely gorgeous and I geek out every time he uploads. Although he doesn't only cover lost media, it's a huge part of his channel and one of the main subjects he covers, so I highly recommend you head over there and take a look at his catalog of videos. Next is El Supersonic Q, whose channel's focus is solely lost media. El Supersonic Q covers just about every section of Lost Media in very detailed and well put together videos. He's a prominent member of the Lost Media community, and doesn't just report on the latest happenings, but takes an active role himself in searches by helping out with research and outreach. He also uses his channel in a very similar way to Blame It On Jorge, by highlighting a certain piece of Lost Media in an effort to make them more well known and possibly locate people with information. If you're into Lost Media, you would definitely find something you like on this channel. 
Then we have Source Brew, another channel that doesn't solely focus on lost media, but has covered it extensively in the form of icebergs. Source Brew is a great channel to learn about tons of lost media, as well as famous pieces of lost media, so definitely check out his lost media iceberg playlist if you want a full scope of the history. Finally, we have All Things Lost, another great channel in the same vein as El Supersonic Q, who covers all different genres of lost media. This channel, in my opinion, feels a bit underrated in the lost media community, so I definitely wanted to give a shout out because this is another great place to learn more. Anyways, I think that's it. Check the description, it's going to be loaded with additional information and resources. I think I'll make another lost media video in the future. This has always been a fascinating topic for me. Other than that, have a good one.